Hi, uh, good morning and good evening everyone. So myself Lakshman, Lakshman I'll be just taking care of all these training sessions. So uh, we'll start today's session. Okay. Fine. So as a part of today demo agenda these are the points we have to discuss today so first we'll be discussing about uh, what is the oracle fusion applications all about and towards the background of this fusion uh, applications and uh, we'll try to understand what are the different models available in the market for the implementation approach and uh, what would be the enterprise structure as per fusion applications as we know like uh, near uh, or EBS we have which we are calling as multi arc structure how they redesigned here and uh, what are the changes uh, what are the similarities we we'll look into that then later we'll be discussing about uh, fusion arc structure then what what is the how this rapid implementation will be useful when we are working on fusion applications and what would be the data conversion say data migration okay uh, strategy here will be following in the fusion application there is a big difference and the other finally we'll be discussing about what is the course content for this the fusion financial training so these points will be touching in today demo okay let's go through these one by one okay so first okay let's just take this point first point what is all, it's all about fusion applications as you know we have many ERPs in the market we can see like okay we have Oracle ERP and SAP PeopleSoft JD AdWords Seabill Okay, this is how we have many other ERP products in the market. So along with this ERP product <coughs> products, there are many other applications or enterprise solutions which we call say I'm taking a few examples. Hyperion and uh, Primavera, so and so many other products we have. Okay, which we see as a enterprise solutions along with the ERP okay so when you look into these these just I'm naming these as a ERP products along with us these are like uh, some other uh, solutions which will be offering some for specialized business area so when you look at as we know like uh, when you look at Oracle ERP I request you all to just mute yourself if just if you are if you have any questions you can unmute yourself and you can ask me the question then we can discuss on that otherwise just uh, request you everyone to mute yourself right thank you so just done so as we know like when you talk about oracle erp here out of from oracle erp we have many solutions for many business solutions for financial solution we have and uh, cm crm projects okay for different areas of business we have a different solutions but out of all what we can say here we can say the financial financial series is very specialized specialized area from oracle applications when you talk about people soft uh, sap say sd sales and distribution and people soft hrms JD AdWords specialized in procurement and Seabill for CRM, Hyperion for 
reporting and budgeting and primavera for project planning okay the scheduling okay fine <clears throat> so this is how if you take a few erp products or some other enterprise solutions so those are specialized specialized in the specific area but not in all the aspects and all the ways of solutions so but if any company is going to implement if any company is going to implement erp it's a big challenge which product they have to choose generally what they do is in which area they are majorly their process will be driven and all based on that they'll be choosing if they choose oracle erp okay the financials they can get the best solution out of that but when you talk about hrms and procurement crm and other areas they they are they may not be good enough okay it's so i can hear some noise okay <clears throat> Uh, just I request you all just to mute yourself. Please, you can see here, friend. So when you look into these ERP products, they are specialized in spe uh, specific area, but we don't have any product which will be catering all the sp specialized areas. Say, if company is going to implement financials, projects, and procurement, and uh, SEM supply chain management we don't have any one product we have many products okay from which products we can find that as a solution but those are not well specialized in all the aspects when you compare with other erp products or other vendor based uh, products so for that reason what oracle did is as we know so except this sap almost here whatever i listed not only this there are many other products oracle acquired oracle acquired all these as we know, like uh, this Oracle ERP is it's owned by just it's a Oracle Corporation product. Okay, rest of all this PeopleSoft, JD AdWords, Siebel CRM, Hyperion, Primavera, and so on. So there are many other products Oracle acquired. After acquiring all these products, what they did from all these products, they taken the best solutions. They taken the best solution out of these different ERP products and some other enterprise application related uh, so, uh, kind of solutions by taking say for example here just for our understanding from Oracle ERP Oracle ERP they taken financials from PeopleSoft they taken HRM solution from JD AdWords they taken the procurement from Siebel they taken CRM solutions from Hyperion they taken a reporting, a reporting solution primarily and Primavera, of course, they didn't take into this uh, fusion, but this is how they just acquired many products from out of those the uh, Oracle acquisitions. They take in the best solutions out of that and they build application called as Oracle Fusion Applications. Okay, Oracle Fusion Applications. Okay, that means whatever the best futures you find across the different ERP products which you acquired by Oracle, all those they take in for the from the different areas and accordingly just just they build an application called as oracle fusion applications this is how just we can find the background of fusion applications if anybody has any question on this you can ask me we'll discuss then we can move on to next point whatever we plan here any questions on this uh, yes sir Lakshman, yeah, sir. yeah. What, what about the supply chain management because the traditional ERP, Oracle ERP, has a very strong uh, supply chain management also, right? Yes. Yes, that, that's true. That's true. That is there. But just uh, I want to pick very major one from each ERP. Uh, that is the reason just I am just taking one area from each product. I agree with you. But my, my question is, yeah. do the future applications also have the... Uh, Supply chain management like the bomb with the, yeah we uh, have yes 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 we have everything but uh, when you talk about uh, CM supply chain management uh, I here uh, I have one request after asking the question you can just mute yourself I'll be explaining after once uh, my part is done you can just again you can ask your question okay thanks or else we'll be getting some noise sometimes okay fine so yes in uh, fusion also we have a, a CM supply chain management uh, solutions. 
so but here as of now this order management part is not ready from oracle so that is the reason just officially they released this uh, procurement part where you don't find order management rest of all this whatever you are talking this bomb and other areas are ready except order management okay please if you have any question please okay. yeah. thank you yeah thanks any other questions from anyone Lakshman? yeah so is a procurement infusion applications from JD AdWords or is it from EBS? Uh, major part from JD AdWords. They take in a uh, few areas from, it's a mix of, it's a mix of uh, JD AdWords and uh, Oracle SCM, Oracle procurement, EBS procurement. Not 100% from JD AdWords. That's what. They taken it's not complete uh, solution they taken from one year even when you just look into this financials also few things they taken from other products there's no big change and all but certain uh, function functionalities they taken from other products even few things they taken from jd adverse of financials also into our fusion financials okay the most of the functionality from jd adverse still they taken from ebs also Any other questions? Fine. Okay. So this is all about uh, to understand what is the background of these fusion applications. Okay. So they take in the best features out of this. Other than that, whatever you whatever you may not find in some other ERP products, also such kind of new features also they introduced as a part of this fusion applications the different solutions okay done now we'll move on to next point okay Okay, the other point here to understand. So, fusion applications implementation model or adoptions. Okay, primarily we have two models here, two adoptions. One is on premise, and the other one is second option is cloud. So as we know, like uh, on-premise, we know very well, okay, uh, as of the ERP, uh, EBS, okay, implementations all will take place with the on-premise model only. In case of on-premise, what happens is the client, the client has to procure all the server infrastructure where they'll be incurring a lot of cost. And again, they have to take care of the instance uh, they have to take care of the maintenance and they have to procure take the license from oracle okay just i'm highlighting three points one is the server infrastructure should be maintained by client the second point is license they should take the license for product the other third point is the maintenance also should be done by client company who are using this product in case of on-premise this is how things will work but when you talk about cloud okay Okay, when you talk about cloud, okay, here just one is server license. Okay, and uh, other parties resource, technical resource they have to maintain in case of on premise. But if client will go with the cloud, what is the meaning of cloud here? So, very simple. So in case of on in, in, in on on premise case, what we do is the server and all will be maintaining in our premises, and where we'll take care of the will 
our uh, people, our technical people take care of that maintenance and before that we have to take the license then only that uh, we can deploy that uh, product we can deploy in the server. But when you talk about cloud, there won't be any physical server. In case of cloud mode, cloud option, there won't be any physical server. The servers will be residing in the, I mean, primarily the major point here is we'll be maintaining, we'll be using the virtual servers. And in case of on-premise, there will be physical server which will be residing in the client location. And in case of cloud model or cloud adoption, what happens is we, we no need to maintain any physical servers. The servers will be maintained by Oracle. What kind of servers means virtual servers. The virtual servers will be maintained and these physical servers when you talk about on-premise that will be residing in the client location. But where virtual servers will be residing, virtual servers will be residing in the internet as a source. The internet as a source, virtual servers will be maintained. However, you can do the installation, however, the activities you can do on the physical server, almost all the activities you can perform on virtual server. So now Oracle is one of the big cloud computing company who are offering these cloud solutions, okay, cloud services. So in case of cloud, hello, any question? If somebody is asking. Okay, right. So when client will go with the cloud option, what happens is the cloud no need to maintain any physical servers. The servers will be maintained by Oracle, which we call as virtual servers. And next point, licensing. Okay, when you talk about license, in case of on-premise, it's a mandatory the client should take the license. But in case of cloud, okay, the servers and everything will be maintained by Oracle and license also it's not mandatory. There could be, there, the, they can go with a certain agreement saying that we'll use your application product and we'll be paying yearly base or else that can be user based agreement okay based on the number of users the client can pay to oracle it's not mandatory in all the cases where they have to take the license and third point resource or maintenance so when you go with the cloud option when you go with the cloud option oracle will take care of the maintenance we don't need to worry about okay we don't need to worry about the maintenance and uh, upcoming uh, new versions updates and all everything will take place automatically to understand this point, again, we have to just go with the different options. When you talk about cloud, simple point is the server will be residing in the internet as a source and it, it would be virtual server. We'll be just accessing virtual server. If you go with the cloud, as we know, like uh, when you compare with on-premise with the cloud in terms of the performance also here, it will be very high in case of cloud. On-premise, say, for example, the server is residing in India and users are working from US or from different different countries. In that case, when user is performing some action and that there will be some response time and uh, just accessing time, etc., etc., it, it's, it would be some time taking. When you go with the cloud option, it's just one click away. Just it's once your user performs some activity, the response will be very immediate and all. There won't be any performance related issues. Since server is not physically residing in somewhere, it's directly it is there. In the internet as source means wherever you have a internet availability there you can find your server is ready to use so on that base so the cloud option is more preferable now and uh, here there is one challenge for uh, between this i mean with the cloud when you go with on-premise other point just here just i'll be mentioning security okay when we go with on-premise there won't be any security related issues because the server is residing in the client location and uh, we will take care of the server and the data integrity issues etc will take care of but when you go with the cloud the server will be maintained by oracle and all but still it is a cloud based uh, deployment oracle is oracle will make sure that the data security and all they are taking care of nowadays many companies even uh, some banks also they are just they are using this uh, cloud solution cloud services uh, from oracle for their uh, internal operations for financials or other areas so that that point we can just notice here and when you talk about cloud within the cloud we have a different models again we have a SaaS SaaS is one and we have other option for adoption called as pass
Okay, sass and pass, sass and pass. What is the meaning of this sass? Okay, sass stands for software as a service. Software as a service. Say for example, just you are going with the cloud cloud uh, model implementation. That means you are not going to maintain any server. You are not going to buy any server infrastructure. You don't need to take license, etc. You are not going to do that. Uh, and here, when you go with the SaaS model, in the within the cloud we have SaaS, PaaS, and some other models also we have. But all those are not required. Those are more into technical. But functional point of just for our understanding, we are going to discuss these two points. In case of SaaS model, software as a service. As a customer, what we can do is we can we can just we no need to buy any server and we no need to buy any product and all what we'll do is we'll implement that product as per our business requirement and we'll be using and we'll be paying but here the big challenge is if you go with the SaaS model software as a service oracle will allow you to just do the implementation or else you can request them to do the implementation final as per your requirement implementation will be done and we will be using and we'll be paying to the oracle based on the user base or uh, that uh, period based subscription so if you want to do any kind of customizations oracle won't accept if you go with the sas model in case of sas model customizations are not allowed if you want to do some sort of personalizations or that kind of activities oracle will allow but if you go with the cloud sas model the customizations are not allowed but if you look into some companies say for example ger Emerson or this kind of big companies if they are going to use this cloud option with Oracle okay so it won't work because as per their business process many things need to be customized the respective applications or business flows in that case SaaS model doesn't support for that kind of clients for that Oracle is offering PaaS model PaaS stands for platform as a service PaaS stands for platform as a service in platform as a service what oracle is doing they are providing the platform where the client can do their own customizations as per their requirement they can do the customizations then they can start using that application the customization option will be available with the pass not with the sas okay so here anyway just go with if you go with the sas model what what is the advantage you cannot disadvantage is you cannot do the customization what is the other advantage if oracle is releasing the new version automatically you were just you were the product will get up auto upgraded to the next version latest versions okay if you go with the pass model you will be doing the customizations any upgrades you have to do that again you have to just request oracle to do that Again, there will be some additional charge from Oracle. In case of SaaS model, hello, hello, please. Uh, I think somebody has some question or something. Okay, fine. sorry it's, it's got disconnected i guess fine hope uh, everyone can hear me now okay so if you go with this sas auto upgrade option would be available we don't need to do anything whenever oracle just will release new version automatically they'll upgrade from the current version where we are standing okay from there to latest version but if you go with the sas okay customizations are possible but uh, it works like how now generally now we do like we are using the, the CBS also. If you want to upgrade, you have to go with this upgrade process. The same practice we have to follow in the pass model. Okay, these are the two points to understand how that uh, implementations takes place. Nowadays, you can see the most of the projects, most of the fusion implementations are happening with the cloud based only. Again, within that, say so, so just 80% with the SaaS model, the rest with pass model. Most of the implementation cloud only. 
okay you may not uh, find here or there just any on premise models because here oracle is taking care of that uh, security related const uh, all the risks and all they're just they'll make sure that there won't be an issue with the security even if it's going to be deployed at uh, oracle as a kind of cloud solution so if anybody has questions on this in terms of understanding or any just clarification need on SaaS or this on-premise or cloud or any other points you want to raise, you can ask me now. Any questions on this? Lakshman. Yeah, please. Lakshman, on no, on-premise no. after release nine, uh, okay. if uh, the cloud uh, Oracle stopped the releasing for on-premise, right? So what happens to them if you, if they want to upgrade to the latest versions like ten, eleven? No, they have. It's not like Oracle stopped. They have like uh, in the e-delivery and all if you refer you may not find for on-premise but still that solution is available with Oracle. Okay, that is there with Oracle but uh, here and there in that uh, the, their website and all you'll be finding the primarily cloud. Cloud-based versions there'll be the documentation etc. you can see but still that is available with Oracle. On-premise still it is there. But majorly they are focusing on the cloud cloud services only that is the reason that they are not highlighting much on the they are not uh, promoting this on premise that reason you we may not see just wherever they are just publishing that newsletters or etc that is there with the latest version also on premise option is available okay thank you yeah thanks this is about have one yeah yeah can you give us an idea of what are the options right now is there on the future application? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Pavan, I'm not able to hear you properly. Can you give us an idea of what is the options available right now with the Fusion? Okay, Fusion versions, yes. Uh, that will be, we'll be discussing in detail level in another session. Now, see here, when I talk about version, basically, okay, we'll talk on that. Okay, I'll just, I'll talk about it. Fine. Thanks. So when you talk about versions, when you talk about versions, basically this fusion version is starts with 11G. See, as we know, like R12. When you say R12, again, within that, we have some sub versions. Uh, say, for example, 12.1.1, 12.1.3, 12.2.0, 12.2.1. This is how we have sub version. The series is R12. Okay, series wise you can find version as R12 and before that we have a 11i again here we have sub versioning as a 11.1.5, 1.2 and before that 11.1.4 etc etc. The same way here 11i this is R12 now fusion is 11g. As we know 11g it stands for this database also this is one of the version for database 11g. Okay grid uh, offering so but for application also they're given when you say 11g generally the people understanding would be database version but with 11g version only oracle released fusion applications the fusion applications version also 11g okay 11g now here again within 11g they just release different different versions so 11 point okay one point let me see just one point one point one point zero this is how just they are just keep releasing different different versions to just the same way different different versions they released and four I'll do is direct. Five, seven, eight, nine. Then now just we are standing the latest version. They released this. 
11. So now instead of when we talk about fusion application, instead of calling the version with 11 and all, simply we are calling with this series. So we call as release 11 and release 10, release 9, release 8, release 7, release 5. This is how we'll be calling. The latest version we have recently what Varak release is release 11. Prior to that we have release 10, 9, 8, 7 and all. So these are the versions. Just basically this is the actual version like 11G we call. Within that these are the sub versioning but generally general usage will be just calling as release 8, release 9, release 10, release 11. Okay. So what Oracle is doing is between these versions and all. In terms of futures, yes, there are few changes, but more than futures, the product areas, they are keep adding from one version to other version. Okay, that's how just, they will keep uh, just moving on this new versioning concept. Okay, this is all about uh, the version, about this fusion application. So any question here? Pavan, any question here? Uh, what is the data, uh, database versions for yeah. this uh, application versions? The application version, the latest database, uh, the database which you are using is uh, 12C. 12C, oh, for all 11, 11 yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, right from beginning they are using that since that version is already available with Oracle and stabilized. Yeah. Again, there is option available. The client can just opt and they can use it. That is also available by default. It's coming as it was. Any other questions? Fine. Okay, this is all about uh, the vers version to understand about this fusion applications. Any questions on this cloud option, cloud based adaption? Okay, fine, done. Now just we'll move on to next point Oracle Fusion Enterprise Structure. So, as we know this multi-org structure, as a multi-org like we have as per R12, we have a business group. Just let me write here. EBS. But I'm just referring R12 one. EBS R12 multi-org. Multi or structure. So here, as you know, like it's a business group, as umbrella, like just will be having on top of just highest level business group. Under that, will have a primary ledger, under primary ledger, legal entity, the legal entity operating units under operating units inventory automation so this is the typical uh, automation structure which can be just maintained as per EBS but when you talk about fusion in the fusion what are the structure we are going to create that just simply we call as enterprise structure here we are calling as multi or structure here we call as enterprise structure Okay. Here as per fusion enterprise structure on top we'll have a enterprise under enterprise we'll have a divisions under divisions like as EBS will have a legal entity so primary ledger Under primary ledger, we'll have a legal entity. Under legal entity, in EBS, we have operating unit. 
the same name they just change to replace with business unit and again inventory remain as inventory okay this is what we can see as a enterprise structure in the fusion environment here as we know like we can create a number of business groups depending on the solution for how many countries we are doing okay depending on that we can create the number of business groups but when you talk about this enterprise structure in the fusion we can have only one enterprise for entire instance for a single instance you can have only one enterprise in that case how this hr and payroll information can be managed within enterprise see in ebs okay within one single instance you can create the multiple business groups but here the business group is not equal to enterprise when you compare with the fusion so however you can create a number of business groups okay equally by referring this business group okay equal to this business group in fusion we have a legislative data group concept with that the hr hcm human capital management the hrs hrms solution can be uh, just designed okay hrms solution can be just uh, can be done uh, with a function called as legislative data group but uh, for each instance we can have only one enterprise within one enterprise we can have a number of legislative groups which will be equal to business group as per eps and the next point is divisions so division is the concept again this is the new kind of uh, organizational element which we can see here so what is a division <laughs> The each vertical of the business, if client is doing the different vertical of businesses, each vertical of business client can take as a one division, and that's how they can uh, just uh, build their enterprise structure, and or else specific uh, some geographical area they can take as a separate division. EMEA, APAC, and etc. etc. If client is doing the operations across the globe and different uh, geographies, each geography they can take as a one division. Here two options best possibilities we have based on geography they can make the divisions or else based on the vertical of the business they are doing accordingly they can have a number of divisions and next point is private ledger has the same just it's a transaction entity it remains same and legal entities there is no change here and business unit so whatever you are calling as operating at OU in fusion will be calling as BU business unit when we are just we'll see that when you are creating and all there are certain things which we call as functions etc that slightly they change that will be understanding when you are working but here just the point here is in fusion we are not calling it as operating unit the name they just replaced with business unit and the inventory organization will remain same okay this this is what we can find in the fusion as an enterprise structure out of this divisions are not mandatory okay when you are going to create this enterprise structure in the system environment divisions are not mandatory uh, de definition so by ignoring the divisions we can proceed with that enterprise primary ledger legal entity bu and the inventory organization if at all required where you are running the business in the different geographies or different verticals of business that you want to track as a with the division concept where you want to do the reporting and where you want to do the some balancing kind of activity that all possible at division level so this is all about uh, the enterprise structure to understand from fusion if you have any questions here just please ask me we can discuss the business group has a lot of importance right and you said there is a similar point in a Fusion enterprise. What is that? Business enterprise. See, enterprise will be referring the work group company. Okay, just it's like uh, the title for entire structure and all. Here you can manage. See here in the business group level. Uh, here in the enterprise level, you can see in EBS. EBS. Uh, one second. Just I can hear some noise. Okay, in business group level what you can do you can uh, just go and define and you can set up all the information like uh, what i can say this uh, employee number generation and contingent worker applic applicant number generation and uh, what are the 
uh, flex field structures will be using etc will be able to specify when you are when you define the business book the similar activity you can perform at enterprise for entire uh, group company level you can set the same options so here also you can specify employee number generations and uh, still you can go and specify uh, this uh, structures flex field structures which are related to HR and payroll related but still those will work as a defaults but still we have a option okay based on for which country related HR or payroll solution you want to manage accordingly you can have a legislated data groups that level you will be able to control very granular level so that's what I am trying to say here so here if you are going to see in EBS you may create say for example five business groups but that option you don't have here here you have to create one enterprise but equal to business group we have a concept called as legislative data group with e business group what you are able to control or default in EBS in the similar way with the legislative data groups the same you can do in the fusion environment but not with the enterprise structure okay that's what I'm trying to say here but I still have one question on it yeah uh, the say for example you're talking about the flexible structure and all those things is tied to the business group but even though you have the different legislative structure, yeah. uh, those flexibles will be common across all those things, right? No, no, no. There you can just set overrides and you can uh, set up your own policies how that should be governed under that legislative data group. Okay. But still, you can have one which is common for global and you can overwrite based on the leg legislative structure. Yeah, yeah country, spe country specific, yes. You can do that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Fine. Okay. So these are the points to understand about this enterprise structure, how it's different or how it's similar. Okay. Fine that. And just we'll move on to other point here. The fusion arc structure. So, fine. first, before we just talk about this fusion and arc structure, let's look into this EBS. It's a very simple, as per EBS, we'll have a applications and we'll have a database. Okay, the application will have and we'll have a database. When I talk about application, we'll have all applications like GLAP here, CM, and uh, FA, and many other. We talk about database. We have a Oracle database. Fine. <clears throat> so in EBS, what happens is, since this is a kind of okay, uh, there will be user trier also, but I am not talking that desktop or trier and all. That's not required here to understand. As we know already we know that so here simple point uh, to compare with the uh, fusion I'm taking this simple we'll have application and database so whatever activity you are doing directly will do through this uh, within the application that data will get stored in the database here there is no mechanism where something will control and monitor and uh, will enforce some kind of uh, rules etc between this application and the database Okay, if you are going to integrate any uh, third party application with the payables, straight away will be integrating with the AP. Okay, there is no intermediate step where it will do some some kind of activity that will be anchoring between this AP and other non Oracle applications, etc. There is no some different uh, tire between these applications and database. Even communication wise also, there will be direct communication between the application and the database. There is no too much monitoring and controlling. Okay or any kind of uh, security between these two applications if any security or any any rule if you are talk about that will be set at application level only which application we are using in that application level only we can set that security or any kind of uh, controls or rules we can set up so by following that we'll be using that application according to the data will go and store in the database but when you look into oracle fusion architecture okay the fusion architecture is we have a application and we have a database and between this application and database Oracle introduced middleware 
okay middleware technology introduced when you talk about application same here also just we will have a, these applications only what is the terminology and as per fusion and all that will be discussing later but just to differentiate to understand so application level will be having this but when you talk about or database the fusion will have a, we have two databases one is oracle database other one is s based database and middleware okay when we are working on this application okay when the data is processing uh, processed and stored in the database or when uh, when you are fetching the data through that or when you are going to do the integrations etc and uh, to build uh, very granular level securities etc for all the aspects oracle introduced this middleware so here where we have a different different uh, tools or different uh, technologies and applications we have as a part of middleware when you look into this middleware say for example we have bpm apm oim or idm uh, soa bpl oum and etc etc there are many there are many other middleware tools are available Here we know these applications very well. So when you talk about this middleware, so these are the different different tools or the applications they have as a part of middleware. Now through these applications, just I'll first I'll take this one, IDM. IDM stands for Identity Manager. For same IDM, other name is OIM. Oracle Identity Manager. Okay, so in Fusion, what we do is in EBS also, like uh, we have a system administrator responsibility. Okay, system administrator that will be standing in the level of application only, but the purpose is different. We can create responsibility, custom menus, and job uh, custom menus, request groups, some custom programs, etc. We can do, but that will be just standing in the layer of that application along with all the other applications which we'll be using but in the fusion what they did is they taken this idm or oim both are same so this will be using for the purpose of okay the equal to system administrator responsibility in ebs which we are i mean we have a system administrator where we'll create users responsibilities and some other activities whatever we do similar to that here we have a idm but here we don't have any concept called as responsibility how things can be managed and all we'll be discussing in the further session we don't have any concept called as responsibility in the fusion but user management and everything can be done by this idea very granular level security you can set up through idm that is possible but this idm or oim now you are part of middleware all will be just controlled by middleware these applications will be just uh, lying in the middleware okay part and other part other one is bpm BPM stands for BPM. BPM stands for Business Process Management. Okay, you know in EBS we have AME Approval Management Engine. Okay, so that part now in Fusion you you can see as a BPM, Business Process Management. This is also one of the middleware tool which will be just just uh, taking care of this complete uh, approval process across all the applications when you talk about this uh, EBS if you want to set the invoice approvals yes you'll be setting from AME if you want to set the procurement purchase related approvals directly you can set from purchasing if you want to set uh, general approvals you can set from GL means we have flexibility where we can set from the different places but in a fusion environment, what are the approvals you have to set that you can set from BPM only. Through BPM will be setting all these approvals and all. Anyway, in our sessions, we'll be seeing how to set the approvals, how things works through BPM and all. That we'll see. Other one is APM. Okay, it's like uh, access policy manager or authorization policy manager or management, you can call it. Okay, 
so here in fusion it's a completely it's a, everything works based on the rules and all so as we know like for in ebs for every application oracle is providing some seeded roles seeded roles uh, i'm sorry seeded menus in ebs for payables receivables gl and all other applications oracle is providing some seeded menus similar to that here fusion oracle is providing the seeded job roles for each application for payables they are providing some seeded job roles from this gl apr and for all the applications they are oracle is just providing some seeded roles all the seeded roles can be managed within the apm only with the help of template role templates okay that will be discussing in de detail level but just i'm trying to introduce that what is the purpose of that so through idm or om we can do the user management and with the bpm we can do that approval management and with apm the roles and the role template and the role relevant related duties etc that all things can be managed by this apm authorization policy manager and soa and these all comes under soa uh, i mean service oriented architecture soa and uh, bpl business process execution language these purely technical related uh, objects technical related components which we have as a part of middleware these they'll be using for the integrations and all if you are going to integrate any applications the fusion so you are site aware you are not going to do any integration with the respective application however you do in the ebs so now any any integrations or any data inflows or outflows means a kind of inbound or outbound related data process can be managed by middleware only okay straight away you cannot do any kind of integrations that is not possible everything should be done through this only this oum uh, okay oracle unified uh, okay sorry oum oracle that i written the method name okay oracle ocm oracle content management okay oracle content management okay through this just uh, we have a concept called as where we can manage the data when we are loading the data into the system that you can manage with the ocm oracle content management there is a, some directory through that we can manage that that anyway in our course we'll see that there is a process called data conversion or migration activity which has to be processed through this only okay or else universal content management also you can call it universal content management ucm universal content management the same way in the middleware there are many other technologies okay many other components okay but primarily when you talk about functional front so these are the primary things which we, we should aware of these let me write this ucm also here ucm the rest many we have those all falls under technical areas these all are functional related which anyway we'll just come across all these things when you're working another point here is database when you look at this uh, ebs we have only just oracle database as we know oracle database primarily used for, for storing the some transactional based information so the transactional based information to store the transactional data in uh, fusion also we have oracle database but to store summarized okay summarized uh, information balances we have a space also the space is one of this uh, i mean this is one of the uh, database which oracle uh, i mean see oracle as we know like oracle acquired hyperion basically for hyperion reporting purpose the database which is used is space so in fusion applications the uh, hyperion functionality also will come as inbuilt for reporting purpose to support that kind of uh, solution oracle just they are using space also as a part of product solution so here in oracle database transactional data will be stored here some balances based data will be stored here transaction data will be stored in this balance based data will be stored and here there is a concept called as multi dimensional cubes and all we'll be discussing when we are working on the relevant concept so this is what uh, it's all about uh, fusion architecture to understand very high level what level of understanding we require okay so these all applications will remain in the application tier itself and the middleware we have many components out of that uh, very basic components which we should understand these are the, the three or four okay and database case we have oracle database where transactional data will be stored to store the balances information from those transactional data we have a space 
which will be then basically used for reporting purpose a space will be used for reporting purpose with respect to functions we have a financial reporting studio there will be understanding why this space how it can be used what is the cubes or members etc will be discussing and you'll we'll understand that so this is all about fusion arc structure okay any questions here please Yeah, uh, I have a question for you. Um, yeah, please. See, I understand the architecture from an EBS perspective. Yeah. Um, if you are given an instance, for example, you have a server yeah. and you have an instance, right? So you have one production instance and probably you will have uh, dev and you know, UAT and stuff like that, so which you will be continuing using. Yeah. From a cloud perspective, mm. um, if there is a, if there is a, uh, subscription which you pay to Oracle. Mm. So, do they have a, a big production instance and they give you space in that where everyone uses one production instance, or is it no, no, uh, no. they have multiple no. virtual servers and everybody gets their own production instance? M multiple, multiple. Uh, that uh, instance will be uh, it's, uh, specific to client. They are not going to give one instance where multiple clients will be using where they'll set up a security within that. So, however, we are using that physical uh, server uh, environment in the same way, there will be virtual environment, which is completely dedicated for uh, each and every client. So, um, one question. Yeah. So, they keep saying that, you know, if you are on cloud, mm -hmm. whenever they upgrade, you will have to upgrade, right? So, yes. um, for example, um, if they are releasing release 11 mm -hmm. and probably they'll give you like six months time and then they'll upgrade it to release 11 automatically yeah so does it mean that if there are thousand clients they'll have to do the upgrade thousand times no. how does that that technique will be done by oracle that's see because we'll be there as a on client for us again here there is some constraints here some limitations if client is on the cloud SaaS model then automatically oracle will do that upgrade for that they don't charge anything etc etc because you are just using the SaaS model if you are with the pass and all see it's auto upgrade is not possible and all that if you want to go with upgrade and you have to you should you should have interest then you can go ahead with that when you are see they say there are thousand clients the cloud model again depending on whether there is the SaaS or pass model accordingly only the upgrade activity will take place Say client is with a pass model. If they are interested to upgrade, then they'll uh, go ahead with that upgrade activity. Otherwise, Oracle won't force them since they are on the cloud base. But even here also cloud also the SaaS auto upgrade option is available. But if client is interested, then only that also will be done by Oracle automatically. Otherwise, they don't touch. They never uh, just uh, do on their uh, interest. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Any other questions on this? Uh, yeah, please. Me. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, as, a, as a product, like uh, middleware will be inbuilt or we need to configure whatever we require, BPM or APM, uh, how it will come as a product? Uh, no. uh, if and not. Okay, it, it comes along with installation. When we do the installation, it will be part of the instance only. So, okay. Uh, just one second let me just we are getting some noise I'm just muting okay I'll answer it to your question if you have any further question you can unmute your uh, mute uh, unmute yourself you can ask me please yep. okay. fine so when you talk about middleware okay we don't no need to do any separate activity as a process of uh, product installation DPA will be just installing all this so these all are mandatory without middleware installation nothing will work in our uh, instance environment okay these are mandatory without installing these your applications won't work that is the reason you don't have any choice of okay you don't have any choice of just uh, uh, installing one by one there is a certain sequence which need to be followed anyway that uh, dba will take care of it okay that will be there but for licensed areas only will be using as we know that's it okay as a product, just uh, however, in R12, what we do is in Fusion, R12 just will be installing and all. 11 or R12 will be installing within that. What are the different applications, etc., etc. Everything will get installed. But whatever license we have will be using in the same way here also. The entire product will get uh, installed and all. Uh, we'll be using whatever the products we have licensed and all. 
because of this middleware technology now the product uh, installation became very big task and very challenging anyway that will be handled by dba team so this is it could you elaborate on the usage of ucm is it like um can you use it to um essentially do like your master data conversions and things of that nature yeah uh, see i'll tell you about this anyway we'll be discussing very detail level in the further sessions okay here i have a point to talk about it at that time i'll explain this see here i have a uh, fusion data conversion process at that time just i'll uh, just uh, focus on that point whatever you're asking is it fine now? fine thank you yeah Cheers. i'll do that thanks fine so any other questions on this uh, fusion arc structure any other questions uh in ebs we have interface tables and the apis right where do that fit here okay here here also we have uh, uh, that, that that will remain same that interface tables and base tables we have for every application but more uh, that will be mapping etc will done through middleware but for every application we have when you talk about gl gl interface we have the gl interface tables we have and uh, base tables everything we have but when we are going to use them in the process of uh, inbound or any other processes that connectivity will be getting through middleware and normal however in ebs you can connect and you can query and you can see the data if you have a, like access to that particular schema the same concept is applicable here also okay just integration the integration process they changed from where to do it's in stuff direct integration with the direct application from non oracle or any other product the way the process need to be done through middleware but rest of things the application functionalities not all like uh, almost the general functionalities and uh, other uh, base tables or reports or etc etc will remain same but in terms of reports etc the bi publisher and all they introduced and all that will be seen but it will remain that uh, whatever base tables interface tables you see for with the respective application that will remain same okay that will remain same Lakshman, I have, yeah. I have one please uh, in the traditional erp the workflow is heavily emphasized right we yeah. use workflow in pretty much in every model yeah how is that integrated in the fusion uh, architecture in this scenario yeah in the fusion uh, the work uh, workflow only we are just calling as bpm in the bpm will be ma managing the workflow okay the bpm business process <laughs> management within that uh, what is sorry yeah uh, see i'm uh, see workflow is not just the approvals right there is all other account uh, workflow account uh, generation workflow those where that resides yeah, yeah. see yeah correct that is everything is there in the bpm only in the bpm it's not only for approvals okay account generator workflows etc so if you are using the project accounting will be configuring will be setting up account defaults or po related approvals everything will be done those all you can manage with the bpm business process management the process can be approval related or accounting related or etc whatever the process related uh, uh, automations or controls you want to set everything you can do that all the workflows are available as a part of bpm will be working okay. will be configuring will be testing also so that it will be more clear for us when we are working okay for as a question this is answered from my side just we have all the our workflows here yeah but here in fusion the flexibility is just in c in uh, ebs uh, ebs you can uh, from some a web page environment you can do, go and do some setups but in the fusion they given the flexibility where the functional consultants straight away they can go and open the workflow in the specific node level they can go and set up the rules that kind of uh, flexibility also they given which is very easy process okay that level of access available as a functional task we'll see that anyway fine that is our any other questions Any other questions on this? No. Fine. Fine. Then we'll move on to next point. So rapid implementation process. Okay. 
So when I talk about this rapid implementation process, it's very simple. So in Fusion, what Oracle is doing is they are providing spreadsheets. They are providing the spreadsheets. Say normal traditional implementation where when you are doing what generally we do just will be creating calendars, chat of accounts, primary ledger, legal entities, operating units, etc., etc. The enterprise which comes as a common configuration, just a common configuration to work on any application, what setups need to be done, all the setups man will be doing. But in the fusion, what we can do is all those you can just so if you go with the instance, any it could be R12 or Fusion or any version of instance. If you want to do something, you have to go to that specific navigation and you have to open the form. You have to fill something. You have to just move to the other tabs to save and opening other form. A lot of task is involved. Many actions you have to perform. Instead of that, in the Fusion, Oracle is providing rapid implementation spreadsheets. They are providing the spreadsheets. You can download the spreadsheet within the spreadsheet you can enter all the data how many uh, what calendar you want to create just you can fill all the data within the uh, spreadsheet itself what chart of accounts you have to create what segments and what segment values do you require etc etc all you can fill that you can load into the instance that process basically we call as a rapid implementation process so as we know like in uh, ebs and all if you want to load the data you may use the data loader or some other tool to load the chart of account related information or calendar related information. But here now with the fusion, you don't need to depend on any third party tools and you don't need to get into the some technical stuff where you will be writing some programming for loading, etc. So that activity simply you can do with a rapid implementation approach where Oracle is providing the spreadsheets for your uh, normal setup data. What are the setups you do in the instance instead of directly doing in the instance? We have a certain uh, spreadsheet templates within the template you can fill the data the data you can load into the system that process basically we call as rapid implementation process okay just this is a simple point to understand here how the rapid implementation takes place again here we have a great flexibility in one here if you want to create if you want to create uh, any if you want to do any configuration first you have to create the project okay in the fusion environment you have to create the project within the project which applications you are going to implement you have to select the detailed terminals we'll be discussing in the next session Okay, we'll be selecting then you can start doing the configuration. If you want to move all these setups to other projects, simply you can move to the other project. It, it can be the project I'm referring here. It could be environment also you can understand in that way. Okay, that's how we can do that. We'll see detail level once you start working on that. You can understand how project can be created, how the things can be managed in this environment. But simple point here to understand through spreadsheets, the setup data also you can load into the system that process typically we call as a rapid implementation process. Okay, any any question on this? Just simple point. Just this is a simple point to understand. We'll see that uh, how to download this templates and etc. We'll see. That. Okay. Um, question. I know that the rapid implementation okay. spreadsheet is only available for a number of applications. Do you know if there is currently work um, work in the pipeline to extend the coverage? Of the rapid implementation uh, yeah spread. yeah now the coverage rapid implementation the it's a very limited uh, areas this is available but not very detail level all the applications and all the setup data but very very primarily just I can say for this enterprise structure related uh, configuration related uh, spreadsheets only available primary enterprise structure what are the organization units we just now we discussed all that information you can put in the spreadsheet and you can load it apart from that we don't have any many spreadsheets as a part of rapid implementation apart from that invoicing etc etc suppliers customer which we do as a kind of data migration activity for that also we have spreadsheet but that doesn't comes under this rapid implementation that comes under a separate activity but as a part of rapid implementation spreadsheets we have organization based data we can load into the system automatically by filling the uh, spreadsheets that Oracle is working on that there will be good scope of uh, loading other areas of data also into instance that that is there from Oracle side. okay thanks yeah thank you fine this is all about rapid implementation if, if somebody has any questions on this to rise please fine so now just we'll look into this uh, fusion uh, 
data conversion activity so when you talk about this data conversion or data migration okay data conversion or data migration as we know in ebs okay because throughout this course and all always i'll just referring uh, ebs wherever it is possible okay so that it will be easy for us to understand so when you talk about ebs in ebs if you want to do the data conversion what we do first we have to prepare the templates we'll prepare the templates and uh, the client business has to fill the date fill with the data and that will be just will be high level we'll just go through it and we'll submit to we'll share with the technical team what technical team do they do is they'll be interfacing they'll be developing some staging tables right they'll be just uh, developing some staging tables they will dump load they will load data into staging tables for loading also they'll be using just they'll do a lot of coding right they'll be writing a lot of programming they'll be using the technical tools and all then again they have to do a lot of programming for validation once data is available in the interface uh, this uh, staging table okay they'll do the validation after validations they'll be again using some programming to move the data into interface they'll move the data into interface finally okay we can simply import into our respective application then we'll import the data here without technical resource you cannot complete this activity in ebs for sure but in the fusion environment okay when you compare this process with the fusion here we are preparing the templates but in the fusion the templates are ready made templates are there templates will be provided by oracle templates from oracle anyway the data should be just filled by users only business users will provide the data it uh, can be like master data transactional data and here we no need to share with the technical team there is no concept of staging etc etc once we get the data the data we have to load into ucm universal content management you can understand this ucm is equal to staging tables in traditional process of this data uh, migrate conversion in ebs what we do technical people will be developing the staging table they'll create the staging tables the technical script they'll be moving the data and of course here we have one more point here we'll fill the data will be giving to the this people and here the technical people what they do they'll convert into respective format say csv format or some other uh, kind of uh, flat file formats they'll be converting here we'll fill the data and here we can convert okay simply that once we fill the data within the template whatever oracle is providing they give an option to convert into csv okay will be convert to csv file format the file just templates will download from the oracle website and they will that will be sharing with the tech uh, business users they'll be filling once data is filled that we can convert into csv then we can load into ucm ucm stands for universal content management this is one of the middleware tool uh, this kind of when you are doing the data conversions on our only conversions i'm not talking about other data okay the master and transactional data okay just you can load into ucm universal content management for that we'll be using just some submission activity through that activity you can load into that ucm you may compare with the staging tables so in ebs once data is available in the staging table that the validations and everything takes place right so but here that since that in the ucm uh, that oracle data and predefined validations and all accordingly the validation will take place then after loading into ucm from there we'll move the data to from ucm just then we'll data move the data to interfaces by running the program then we'll import it 
so there is no technical job involved here being a functional consultant you can handle the data conversions in the fusion environment that's how they're given the solution so these are all activities you no need to perform just uh, just kind of staging or some coding etc etc as you know it's a big task which need to be completed with technical team to uh, just uh, to go live or to load the complete uh, production data into production environment okay client uh, live uh, data into production environment so this is not there in the fusion case this is a possible fall simply we'll download the templates we'll go and download the templates and we'll be sharing with the business users and if you want to okay just i mean oh, fine that's not like oh, fine just you can download the templates you can share with the business users they'll be filling the data and then you can you you can just convert with a single click all those uh, templates into csv file formats then you can load by just simple submission program and you can transfer the data from UCM to interfaces, you can populate the interface tables with the data from where you will be moving the data from UCM to interface. Then you can submit another program to import the data into respective application with respect to naming convention of the data. So this is the process we'll follow in Fusion application for data conversions. It's, it, here we have a solution for same as EBS, which data will migrate for almost for all the data. They, they have this solution. This process the templates which will be using for this process we call as FBDA file based data import by using these templates this FBDA templates we can download from Oracle website okay we'll see when we are working on that we'll just go through it you can download and you can just fill the data you can convert you can load you can interface you can import that such kind of simple job you have in fusion environment any question on this fbdi process i mean file based uh, data import process nothing but data conversion do they support excel 2016 <clears throat> excel 2016 yes it will support the latest versions also it will support Because I tried with Excel 2016, there seems to be some problem because every time I try to do this, um, it's coming up with a blank template. Probably I'll have a troubleshoot that. Yeah, Any no. specific ideas on why it is coming blank or? Uh, I'm not sure if you are facing that issue, but uh, as per Oracle documentation and all, it will support for the latest Excel versions also. Okay, thanks. Question. So yeah. I know that FBDI. Okay. Um, I know that the FBDI supports your um, your primary um, conversions, but for instance, I don't remember seeing an FBDI for some like grants. Um, if I want to convert like my grants, for instance, um, is that currently in flight or is it in development? Or is it something that if you're trying to do a conversion which the FBDI currently does not support, you still have to find a way to get it to the, um, to the interface table and then to the base table? Okay, fine. In, in that case, in that case, you if again, depends on what deployment, what uh, model you are following. If it is SaaS, it is not possible. You have to raise a request to Oracle where they can give you the permission to just populate the data through your the custom procedures are etc okay with their approval you have to do it if you are in the environment of pass you will be having the option always you can go with the traditional process which you follow on the ebs for any data that is possible in the pass model in case of sas you should get approval from oracle you have to raise a request they have to accept and all anyway it's not going to be customization it's all about loading the data in the just uh, the easiest way for that you should get approval then that can be supported by oracle in cloud base if it is going to be on premise you can play with that instance whatever however you are just do, using your current ebs instance in the same way you can play with that even it is a fusion if that is going to be on premise okay thank you yeah, thanks Lakshman, uh, i have one question yeah you, you just said that uh, in order to load the data you need approval from the oracle in the sas case uh, no, no, no 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 see to load the data just as by following the standard process which is oracle is recommending and possible we no need to get any just uh, 
uh, approvals from Oracle. What I am trying to say here, here the, just now the discussion is, if at all, if I want to load some data, which I cannot uh, just uh, pull through this process, in that case, how to just okay. uh, pump the data into the instance, uh, that process, okay. so, since there is no standard site solution, which is offered by Oracle, we have to speak to them so that we can follow the traditional process which we are following in EBS. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there any data transformation capability in these templates? For example, um, if you use an old chart of account and um, we are changing our chart in Fusion, the conversion between the old chart and the new chart, is there any facility to do that? Or you have to convert that to the new value using some external method and then put in the new values there? No, uh, sorry, like really I didn't understand uh... What, what is the exact requirement? As a requirement, can you tell me like uh, what what you want to do? Like you are the talking about. Is, yeah, yeah. For example, if you're in R12 and okay. you're moving to Fusion. Okay. So between uh, R12 and Fusion, mm -hmm. I'm desiring no, to no, change no. my chart. I I got I got your question and uh, here, see if you want to if you are moving from R12 to Fusion anyway, the migration is not possible as of now. It's not possible. Straight away you cannot migrate. You have to just come up with as a fresh implementation only and if you have a chart of accounts information in the system that you cannot move there are many changes happened there are many changes happened uh, uh, the how the chart of account uh, values can be maintained and accounts hierarchy and uh, other points are there so you cannot move even if you have some data in that uh, some spreadsheet etc and what you have to do by following this uh, rapid implementation spreadsheets you have to fill the same data and you can do it so migration is not there uh, from uh, release 12 to fusion not there from uh, the solution is not at all ready and if you are moving so from I, other, I, yep i understand there is no migration mm -hmm. what i was thinking is even if you are not um, I, I was just talking about the data transformation between an old chart and a new chart that's it i understand that there is no migration path um, just this in any implementation, even if you are coming from a different system, oh. so it may be like you may have a five chair segment chart, and in Fusion you want a eight segment chart. Yeah, that's always uh, that. That is always uh, product will say okay because see there won't be an issue. The client might be having uh, some uh, limited segments, and if they are moving, the only the thing what they have to do is they have to add accordingly, and when they are loading the data also, those values they have to specify as a code combinations. So that the, that that will work fine. When we are coming to fusion, anyway, that is going to be new. Before just you move into this environment, you can finalize accordingly. You can take an entry into this. There won't be an issue. That that can be done. So the mapping should be external. That's what you're yeah, trying yeah, to say. Exa okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Correct. Any other questions? Okay. Here I have one question. Chat window. How to do custom validations if required on this process of conversion? So we no need to do that. That already the predefined validations Oracle built, which will happen in UCM. So we externally we no need to write any custom validations. Okay, not required. And if you want to have your own validations and all, then definitely you just you have to contact the Oracle for this process. But in the standard process. We don't need to do any validations. The system will do the validations and it will be just generating that uh, error related validation sheets, uh, spreadsheets that it will do. That. Okay, we don't need to do that. Okay, not required. Yeah. Fine, that. Any other questions? Fine. Quick question on you touched base on the BPM. Okay. and how to utilize BPM for both um, workflow approval as well as account generator. Um, so the account generator, it could be um, across all the applications, right? So for instance, AR account generator, FA account generator, um, um, projects account generator, things of that nature, is that correct? So we've moved all of that from like the core application to BPM. Okay. No, see in the uh, BPM BPM level, uh, the yes account uh, you can uh, set up that uh, 
workflows for in any purpose any purpose whatever the purposes we are using the workflows in uh, EPS the same can be possible through BPM process no just here what 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 else you want to understand uh, could you please uh, highlight that point so the point was I right. know that you touched base on workflow approval yeah by from employee to supervisor to senior management Got right it. that kind yep. of yep. and then beyond that if I want to generate my account I if a combination of a cost center and the project I want it to go to a particular legal entity. For instance, if this is a project-based yep. account generator, is this something that I can do within BPM? Yeah, yeah. And in addition to that, um, yes. you also have those account generators in AR, for instance, where you can look at the sales yep. first and things of that nature to map into a particular um, account in straight. Yes, you can do through uh, BPM. Because in EBS, yeah. uh, in EBS, we have a workflow, uh, workflow like uh, with that. Uh, there, you can access any workflow, any uh, workflow. It can be approved related workflow or anything. Just only the title, the specific title you have to select so that you can open and you can go ahead and do the modification. Or else, you may build some your own custom workflow. Also, it could be for accounting purpose or it can be for some process based approval or etc. The same way, this is a place where you can manage everything. That is possible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. So now the final point here is to understand about this course content for our training here. So here, primarily just here. So we'll be covering Oracle Fusion. General ledger, Oracle Fusion, Accounts Payable, Account Receivables, and Cash Management. Oracle Fusion Tax. Just I'll list out and I'll just I'll touch those points. Say so just your See, primarily we'll be focusing on these five applications, GL, APR, CM, and FA, and we have course content also at in detail level. But when I talk about fusion tax, as per EBS, EBT, business tax that here we are calling as fusion tax. So here I'll be just showing, uh, I'll just come to your uh, question, Sam, just I'll, we'll talk on that. Okay. So these are the applications uh, we are going to cover primarily like GL, APR, CM and FA. And uh, when you talk about these applications, this is I can say primarily we are focusing on these five. And Fusion Tax, I'll show you the basic configuration and we'll have a test case where we'll create a transaction in invoice payables or receivables and we'll make sure that tax is calculating. That level I'll be covering with the basic configuration. From purchasing side also Oracle Fusion purchasing what are the basic configuration need to be done for purchasing and we'll see how to create the purchase orders how to create the invoice by matching with PO that I'll be covering. Fusion expense I can show you that uh, configuration part in our environment uh, the process is not working we have some bug but I'll show you that I'll demonstrate uh, the setup which setups need to be completed and where we can initiate the process and what roles need to be assigned etc that I'll be covering. Primarily, these are the applications we are going to cover. Apart from that, anyway, the BPM, etc., etc., that will be covering for the approvals, etc. But core applications are these five you can notice here. This rest, the basic here will have a configuration and a transaction 
tax calculation will be seen in the, our course and even you set up and do invoice match with the PO we can see we cannot see receipt creation and etc etc because the model totally they changed because what are the setups you do in uh, like EBS you cannot uh, complete with the invoice receipt creation and all there is a receipt accounting separate concepts etc they introduced that is the reason just we can see the basic configuration and uh, PO creation approvals even PO approvals and uh, invoice approvals invoice match invoice creation by matching with the PO fusion expense I'll just I'll be covering the configuration I'll show you the configuration not more than that here in this instance we have back for that where we cannot test the process flow okay so that's all about it uh, to look into the detail course content I have here uh, this course content so this is what as a demo we covered today just we discussed about what is the fusion applications and uh, we discussed about what are the different uh, adaptions models available and fusion enterprise structure and the architecture of fusion rapid implementation and the fusion data conversion it's nothing but fpda file based data import process and the course curriculum this is what we are talking so idm and apm so from idm we'll be just uh, learning uh, just user management and in ebs we'll create our custom menus right similar to here we have a roles and all how to create the we first will try to understand what are these job roles, duty roles, data roles, abstract role because everything works based on the roles only here. But even EBS also we have a role concept through user management, but that is limited to very specific functionalities and that to only web page related uh, functionalities. But here everything will be managed with the roles. So we'll try to understand what are these roles and how these are, uh, how just uh, we'll compare with EBS and we'll try to understand then we'll talk about all these uh, user types and implementation user creation employee user creation and role basic roles as assignment to act as implementation consultant and how to create the custom roles will be learning from this and they also will be referring uh, in the apm uh, other action policy manager what are the roles we have what are the role templates we have etc we'll go through it and fsm functional setup manager this is a place where we can do all the setups as we know in EBS, we can do the setups. If you want to do the payable setups, we have to go to payables responsibility, receivables means receivables responsibility. But fusion, you don't need to. There is no concept of responsibility. You don't need to switch from one to other place to do any configuration. All the configurations you can do from single place. That is, we call as function setup manager, which is a centralized uh, place where we can just do all the activities. Here itself, we can create the project and you can manage all the project related activities. You can track the status etc you can monitor the project and you can track the progress of the project etc all the activities can be controlled from here and when you talk about bpm we'll be covering how to just here we'll see payables invoice pro, uh, invoice approval process approvals and process gl journal approvals and process and even purchase order okay purchase order approvals this will configure and we'll be testing and when you talk about enterprise as whatever you discuss based on that will be based on the area which you are working will be creating that enterprise the components units okay we'll just move on that creating the bu primary ledgers legal interest etc will do that from gl side uh, these are the concepts which will be just covering from the gl side these are the concepts we are going to cover okay all these concepts will be covering and from ap just uh, these are the concepts we have to cover like these are uh, initially just i mentioned all these are the setups after that these all are the different processes uh, features which we'll be discussing okay and uh, from here these are the concepts we have as a part of this schedule so these setups will be doing and we'll be working on these different different uh, features as a concept which we have in the application all will be working on this and uh, from cash management we'll see that uh, anyway bank accounts and all will be creating from payable side or receivable side and here major will be learning how to do the manual reconciliation and automatic reconciliations and as a part of fa these setups all will complete and will be working on fa related transaction process this all will be covered and fusion expense i'll show you the setup configuration overview not more than this from fusion expense which is equal to IE expense as for EBS and here it's not over you I'll just will do the configuration and we'll see the process also will test by passing the invoice and tables or receivables transaction where we'll make sure the tax will be calculating from purchasing these I'll just 
it's not over you just i'll show the, all the complete configuration there are some list of around uh, 15 to 20 setups need to be completed for purchasing and we'll see the po creation approvals approvals and kind of similar to you may think as a p2p cycle we'll be covering throughout this okay almost these 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 are part of uh, our course content uh, if you have any questions on anything please you can raise your question we'll discuss on that um from your perspective what is the distinct difference between release 9 and release 11 of fusion uh line 9 and 11 so 9 and 11 basically that user user interface the look and feel uh, totally they changed but not functionality between 9 and 11 and other thing is uh, not for finance for other areas basically the application uh, we call financials procurement and all as as for fusion offerings and when you talk mm -hmm. about offering compared to 9 and 11 there are new offerings which they introduced and uh, the almost uh, wherever they just done with the development and all few futures also added so apart from that there is no great change i can see okay and one last question has been bugging me all the while yep. um, since fusion was introduced yep you know how in ebs um cash application across operating unit um, was always a challenge what is cash application like in AR across business unit? Is it something that has now been streamlined and is possible, or is there still a huge challenge as far as making that happen? No, that is the functionality remain as EBS. In Fusion, they didn't change that uh, cash application. That uh, still here, uh, that will remain as a legal entity, the owner for the bank account. I mean, to say the cash management that will be standing as an as a enterprise structure also the cash application cash management application will be mapped at le level only at the le level le level yes okay yep okay yeah. thanks yep thank you any other questions please uh, what is the timing for classes and uh, what is the duration of the course the course will be completed by end of this month and the uh, uh, timing should be same uh, uh, 7 uh, a.m. IST to 9 9 a.m. IST 7 to 9 okay. we will complete uh, within this month end before month end we will be completing so okay. that we can make sure any other questions when will be the instance available for yeah, instance availability, uh, you'll be getting uh, once you are done with the formalities, you'll be getting maybe like I may start with instance from third session. This is the first session as a, some demo or introduction or a few points understanding and tomorrow we have a session. Okay. Yeah. Monday to Friday. The classes will have from Monday to uh, Friday only. And uh, tomorrow also we'll be discussing theoretically before we get into the application, the We'll, we'll understand few points in terms of user management and other points once we are ready with that information then in third session we can get into the application we'll, we can start working on it and here and I have, what, version, what version of our fusion are we going to be uh, here we are going to use release 8 version because for the training purpose in the market there is no other version which is supporting because rest all uh, here uh, for the customers Oracle is giving that uh, uh, on-premise but not uh, some free downloads and all they are not allowing so that is the reason we are just on release 8 but I'll more or less almost uh, all the features whatever I listed I'll be covering here uh, see here in API I mentioned uh, there are two concepts like recurring invoice third-party payments which are not there in the current version but I just made a, some documentation that I'll be demonstrating in this so I can make sure just make sure that after this training you'll be able to work on in any instance in any environment and uh, to give you some understanding from latest version also I made uh, some screenshots I'll just run through the screenshots and the user interface level changes are etc etc that also will run through once the course is completed so that uh, you'll be 
in the right phase where you will be able to work on all when you are working on any version of instance if you have some issues we can keep in touch from my side whatever possible within my available time i'm ready to support so that's all about and here i have few questions from somebody do you train project modules also yes we do provide training on ppm project portfolio management as we do that if you are interested you can contact uh, you can just drop a mail so that we can make a note and we'll intimate you and is the class only monday to friday yes how to get the course material for offline review so course content will will send you share you across uh, okay if you're not at received we'll be sending you can just go through it we'll send you after this uh, session will share across all the guys so this session being recorded also i'm i'm sorry is this session being recorded uh, recording is done on this session yes we will we'll record each and every session and we'll be sharing across all the people okay okay so this, uh, this. this is on functional training or uh, the technical training no purely functional training Awesome. And do you guys also have technical training for students? Yeah, technical training. Just uh, as of now, no, we are not running. We are, we have a plan of starting. We just uh, we have a trainer uh, with us, uh, but uh, we have to see guys who are interested for that. Based on that, we are planning. Okay, that uh, okay. that will be uh, BIE and uh, ADF and uh, middleware related uh, key components will be covered out of the technical training. Okay. So, any other queries from anyone? No. Fine then. Uh, yeah, please. You guys also train Fusion HCM? HCM. Yeah, HCM also. Yes, yes, we have a uh, sessions for HCM also. Okay. Fine. Even uh, fusion procurement, okay. Fusion procurement also, we we are running the sessions. Let's see, also we are doing that. So if anybody is interested, fusion related, see primarily like uh, here, uh, these just we list in our website also here. So we do provide these trainings uh, here, whatever we listed, uh, fusion financials and PPM, and uh, fusion procurement and HCM. And CRM, DAPS technical, and separately we are just running some batches for only ADF, which is part of technical. But if you go with this uh, fusion technical, all will be part of that uh, ADF, BI, and uh, so BPM, etc. Technical aspects. So fine. If any other questions, sorry. Yes, uh, Lakshman, that ADF can it be integrated with uh, the SAS model or would it be only applicable for if you are developing if you are developing new functionality uh, that uh, you can uh, deploy only in the environment of pass in sas oracle won't accept because uh, customizations are not allowed for that any other questions Fine. If no questions, question. yeah, please. Good question. Yeah. So I know we have SaaS, we have PaaS, and then there's also infrastructure as a service. Yeah. How does that all um, play into um, either the functional or technical enhancement that one can do with it? Yeah. Only in case of PaaS, any just we can do any kind of uh, customizations or custom any. Uh, Functionality it can be related to some function related or some process related customizations you can do if you are in the environment of pass and if you are in the environment of SAS you are not allowed to do any customizations the complete control will be with Oracle only you cannot have a option of doing customizations if at all you have you are running the company where your process need to be customized in that case the best option is you can go with the pass once you're done with all the customizations, you can move from PaaS to SaaS also. 
once you done yeah. with the customizations you can migrate from uh, pass to sas in that case whatever the finalized from your end as a package and all for that oracle will be supporting in that way that upgrades also will be supported but when you are standing only as a pass model you cannot you can go with the pass and do with your customization then move to sas when you are in the sas model you cannot do any customization again before that you can be standing on pass then you can move to sas that's how it works all right so oracle only supports sas or so oh, support sas in the sense it will support both but for custom requirements the best uh, platform is pass if you don't have any see two will be supported two in two cases we can deploy that uh, virtual server will maintain everything maintenance will be done by oracle only in two cases oracle support but in sas model they don't support for customization where in pass it is possible and then where does the infrastructure as a service i a a i a a s where does that fit in so i'm i'm sorry the infrastructure as a service infrastructure like the, yeah okay infrastructure that's what you see in the cloud there are many many options adaptions are available okay just here whatever these these are the primary infrastructure infrastructure as a service uh, in the sense uh, see just uh, you can you can uh, buy the infrastructure or you, uh, you can uh, deploy it oracle then you can start using complete support will be given by oracle and there itself you have one more option you may buy the infrastructure from oracle and they'll be supporting for your infrastructure that kind of model also we have but those are not since very key and all i am not included in our current discussion so majorly just very functional front uh, what gen generally the uh, clients are adapting and all on that based i take in this session where i just mentioned this sas and pass you generally when we are working we don't go beyond that uh, when you see multiple implementations also so not only that uh, infrastructure as service we have some other models also that's reason i said there are many but it's not mandatory we have to understand who has to understand that technical the technical uh, team uh, the which adoption is good for the company they have to take the decision as a functional consultant we generally we don't get into that but when you are working when you know this is the uh, uh, adoption this is the model this client using accordingly we can be aware of whether customization can be done and all for that these two points are enough for us uh, which gives the good understanding in case of saas what can be done by us in pass what is allowed or not allowed that is the reason just i included only two if you go with the cloud there is a big list which you can see here if i just if you once you start writing there is a big list will be getting where we have a different uh, models available from oracle but primarily these are two which we come across thank you yeah thanks any other questions lakshman yeah you said uh, we can move from pass to saas so uh, can we also move from saas to pass if a client initially started with the saas and want to uh, move to pass for some time and then uh, come back to saas eventually later yeah definitely because the see here oracle is not accepting if they find the business requirement say the company is a kind of they need kind of vanilla implementation in that case they can go with the saas later if they acquire some companies and some if they start with a new business process where the process need to be customized as per application as per their business so in that case definitely they can move from uh, saas to pass in that case it option will be available to do customization once you done with all your customizations and again you can move back to the saas so that once you move back to the saas everything control will be oracle so that they can notify what are the customizations you done as a part of the your uh, instance uh, your uh, environment accordingly when they are going with that kind of uh, means once you move back from pass to saas that means the solution will be freezed solution will be freezed again no changes are allowed so on that base the upgrades oracle will just take all the points into consideration they'll be supporting but in that model the costing also will be totally different that is possible any saas to pass or pass to saas switching can be possible okay thank you yeah. and in a application can we see like if it's currently saas or pass is it uh, written anywhere like about oracle applications or anywhere that we can see 
uh no like uh, they don't uh, write it uh, anywhere uh, some technically like uh, some technical object because that is not uh, required to refer by customer and all so that is only limited to that uh, you agreements with oracle and all within the instance you cannot see that even that uh, etc you through url or some navigation or etc you, you don't find this only the thing is who taken that uh, license they can know that rs that information shared with whom they will be knowing but straight away you cannot see however you see the which version this instance is etc etc like that we cannot see that but uh, do we have a vision instance here sorry yeah yeah so vision instance uh, uh, as a vision instance yes oracle is working but not uh, it's a full fledged vision instance it's it's a very basic vision instance i can say but that is see with oracle that is there but that is not uh, kind of full fledged vision instance is a very simple definition they made they named it as vision even it's not uh, even uh, just a full fledged vision instance i can say like there is a instance with a oracle which they named as vision frankly speaking there is not vision okay thank you yeah because see simple point i'll tell you i'll take the classes for this batch i'll do the multi or con uh, enterprise structure configuration so I'll, i if i'm going to name that instance as vision, uh, vision it's not reality vision because there are no many kind of uh, businesses which i configured there are different scenarios and processes i just did the configuration and the system is ready that way that full fledged vision is not there when you compare vision with the ebs vision fusion vision they have maybe uh, 10% vision with them that too the uh, naming conventions etc they created very practice based naming convention they done and they named it as a vision so finally the point is yes they have vision but not a uh, kind of full fledged vision where you can go through all the configurations and processes however you can see in ebs yes thanks yeah. and uh, you yeah. said uh, we are going to be trained on uh, r8 so is it yeah. in uh, cloud based has or no, it's you elaborate it, more on what yeah it, it's on premise it's on premise instance we have only the difference between the saas uh, on premise and cloud it's only deployment that's it but would you be able to show us like how would we migrate from one instance to other instance on saas uh in saas see migration from one instance means what which point you are referring for migration so a couple of points uh, one could be uh, bpm like uh, if i have a, oh. a made a some a made some customizations for general entry approvals or invoice approval process and i want to move all the uh, setups and uh, deadlines all uh, the validations and uh, other yep. setups so if i want to move the whole uh, bpm process or if i want to move all the cash management tool setups like for auto reconciliation process that they could be like 200 no. or 300 rules yep. so if i want to migrate all those no here i'll just basically in the same instance you can have multiple projects you can move from one project to another project and if you want to move to other instance we have we don't have here multiple instances so that uh, process we cannot do even that is not our job where uh, dba people should come into the picture so here i can show you if you want to move the setups from one project to another project project in the sense everything will be doing as a project here in this environment that i can just light on that how to just do that how to just uh, export all the setup data how to load into targeted project that i can we can do try here okay so what i was asking is like similar to fnd loads in abs so do we have that concept here or do we not really have the concept uh we, we have that we have we can move that you are talking about setup data moving right data uh, d link uh, concept right not the database link uh, just like a bpm like a, any uh, uh, workflow if i uh, made some customization okay, and okay, want to migrate to other you yeah, got it got it your point okay my customer so here just only just we will be covering how to configure and all even i am not going to touch some how to customize from where to customize in that case you should have a knowledge on uh, middleware so if you we know middleware then we can touch those points otherwise from here from functional front we cannot do all those activities only that access will be limited to where you can go and set, define some rules as per your business requirement those kind of uh, movements and all you can do from middleware only 
frankly speaking i am not expert on middleware so only my knowledge is limited to this functional areas thank you yeah A any other questions please fine if no question we can wind up the session for today and thanks for joining this session see you tomorrow same time okay tomorrow sharp 7 o'clock will be starting the session but sorry today we took some time we started around uh, 7 15 and all just by waiting for others to join okay tomorrow sharp uh, 7 will be starting the session okay thank you have a good time bye bye thank you thank you thank you so much thank you thanks Thank you.